Okay, so a while ago I did the intro to epoxy granite video where you pretty much saw me make a complete idiot of myself and figure out what worked and what didn't. So this time I finally have some time to run around and smell the wonderful fumes of fiberglass resin and it's time to actually epoxy granite my CNC machine. So let's dive in. Okay, so before we go any further, here's a couple helpful tips that I learned last time. One, don't do things in large batches. What I ended up doing was mixing one paper cup, like an eight ounce paper cup, full of the granite, in this case, the rock that I'm using, and to two cups of sand. I was just using leveling sand because I liked the fact that it had a range of sizes in it to about, three quarters of one of those cups full of fiberglassing resin. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is the sand will suck up the resin like that. So don't be scared if things look a little bit dry. I like to say that the mixture is a bit like that cornstarch and water mixture that you'd make up as a kid that you could like pour out like a liquid, but then if you tried to move it really fast, it would crumble and things like that. That's kind of the way that I equate this stuff. So don't totally freak out. If for whatever reason it is looking dry and it sat for about an hour, then I'd probably come along and drizzle a little bit of resin on top to help fill in the gaps. But for starting out, I wouldn't be that worried. Um, what I am gonna do when these are all done being filled in is I am gonna come along with some excess resin and just pour it over the top to help lock it in there. I know it's probably overkill, but I don't want any problems. So now let's cut to the whole me working in the garage. Okay, so it's a couple days later and sorry about the lighting and stuff, <clears throat> but I got the Y-axis filled. Yeah, this thing is heavy. So as you can see, I did fill in that groove area. I just used some foil tape that I had lying around. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it, but for the sake of time, it actually got the job done. Yay me. Now, if I were to redo it again, I'd probably take the time to cut some nice metal dividers and put them in there and all that stuff. But in my case, it was just like, I don't have time. I wanna get this done. I gotta get the machine back together. It's in pieces all over my work area, which isn't helping anything. So for that reason, I wanted to get the thing just done as fast as humanly possible, just for that sake. That said though, I definitely gotta admit that at least in terms of a holding the thing and oh my gosh, it's heavy. I'm pretty impressed with the epoxy granite. Now, here's a couple of things to keep in mind. 
First one is, it is a messy process. You're working with resin, you're working with sand, you're working with gravel. Definitely not something for somebody who's not willing to make a mess in the process and is definitely not willing to deal with the smell of epoxy while it cures. Now that said, if you're you know smart, you put down say a drop cloth that you're just gonna throw away at the end and things like that, it's really not that bad. It just, it is kind of messy just because of the nature of it. Now the other thing is, it's, I mean, it's, it's cheaper than getting new castings made, but it's also not super cheap. The reason why I say that is the sand and gravel for whatever price the bag was for each that I used a fraction of, those came out to like 12 or $14 for both out the door at Home Depot. So the price of those is relatively cheap. Now the expensive part is the resin. Now, initially, PJ was nice enough to buy me the first batch of resin for the base, which is below me, that was used in the test video, and that worked, but it wasn't exactly the right resin, so I ended up buying some fiberglassing resin from the local Lowe's, and that stuff worked better. The only problem is it's not cheap. Initially, I bought a quart of the stuff for about... 15 bucks, I think, 10 or 15 bucks, and then ran out of that because I also used it for some projects around the house, and then bought a big old jug of the stuff, like 0.9 gallons of it, and ended up using about half of that for the epoxy granite. So, I mean, if it's about 45, $45 50 for 0.9 gallons, I probably used close to like $25 or $30 in resin. So the resin is the really expensive part of this. And that kind of ties into the next thing, is, which is resin is a pain sometimes. Now, when I did the test one, I didn't realize just how moisture sensitive it was. And thanks to Curtis over at Lucky 13 Vinyl for sharing his tip about heating it up to get the resin to kick faster. That was a great tip and it saved my butt again. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is resin certain resins, especially the fiberglass one that I used, actually have a narrow hardening window temperature wise. And if it falls below or above that, you actually have to modify the quantity of hardener you use to compensate for the temperature. Now it's been in the 50s to 60s here in the Bay Area for like the last few days when I've been doing the epoxy granite. So that coupled with the high humidity meant that I was having problems with the fiberglass kicking. So I had to do the old heat it, warm it up with the heat gun trick and it worked good. It actually set and everything like that. It's just, it can be a little bit nerve wracking with, oh my gosh, is this gonna set? Is this gonna be strong? So that's just something to keep in mind. So it's gonna be a couple of days before I actually get the machine back together and I can actually test the thing and be like, yes, this worked, or oh, wow, that was a resounding failure. So it's gonna be a little while before I'll know for sure how it turned out, but just in carrying the thing around, I can definitely notice a weight increase. So I'm hoping that'll increase just the stability of the machine. It assembled weighs in at about 140-ish pounds, I think, which is pretty light. So I'm hoping I was able to dump in a good 20, 30 pounds of weight and also just brace up the castings, especially the Y-axis, which as you saw, man, that thing was horrid. It, it, needed, it needed more casting metal for sure to make it more rigid, but that's that. So I'll stop rambling. I gotta get this bad boy back together and I'll see you guys here next time. I'll make it with Calvin when hopefully we'll have more CNC machining stuff because I'm, I'm itching to make some things.